CT side, like I foresaw already in my crystal bowl. The Norwegian side uh, had a rough start yesterday against Elegon, but they managed to salvage the game. They definitely need this head start against Dignitas, but the Terrorists put on the pressure on the A bomb site. Smoke screen is in place, the bomb goes down, and Dignitas with the first frag as well. Tierby and Rubino as well onto Flusher. That's a stand in for BX3. Everything goes south. Rubino with another frag from the balcony. Great play by the Danish squad. 1 to 0 in their favor. The Terrorists are already showing their strength. That is one of the many set strategies that you can pull out of your head on Mirage, um, on the pistol round. There are just, um, there are only so many options, you know. So, um, you really have to adjust yourself to that possibility of an A go, as well as a B go. And while you're making that split, sometimes your balls will rip apart. And that's what happened to BX3. They go for the force buy with a ZZ-75, a stack on the B bomb site, but only Flusher is at A. He has his uh, one of the favorites, the old school favorites, the ZZ-75. Doesn't pick up the frag, but Skirk does onto MSL. Picks up the AK as well, and this could be dropped for Korn, for example, who could try to save it. Or Skirk could try to save it, or do some more damage. There is Korn with the frag onto Tensky, but Config already has eyes on the rifle. Removes it from the CT's hands, leaves Flush and Korn alone. And well, Korn at least gets a second frag of the round onto Config. So Flush is on the way to the B bomb site. They can pick up two weapons. And if they pick them up, they could save them. Flush's game sense is taking him to middle though, and he is covered there by Kierby. BX3 will lose the second round, but they dealt a lot of damage and they saved an AK. So, uh, in my opinion, that's that's all you can ask for in an eco round in the second round of the game. This round will be much weaker, though. So the chances of the CTs dealing as much damage as they did in the previous one are uh, a little slimmer than before. Maybe Flusher with a 5-7 in mid can do something about it. Not necessarily possible if there is nobody around. The terrorists are executing on the A bomb site. They have another smoke screen in place. Rubino with his um, with his usual position from balcony, just shooting into CPL. He's got all those angles lined up, as well as config on Flusher. So it's a 5v3, and with the AK he managed to hold on to that one, but he's already pushed and taken out by MSL. Now it's Moen's time to go down to Kierby. Even though he managed to take one of the turrets down with him, that's not enough damage dealt for the CT team. And we actually have two stand-ins now for BX3. I have only been told about Paint being replaced by Flusher, but Reason is replaced by Skirk as well. So uh, you could argue, okay, Flusher is the counterweight to Reason. He's um, a little better even, and Skurg is the counterweight to paint, so BX3 should end up on the same skill level, but possibly and probably not the same level of team play. Let's take a look at Dignitas though. They sent Kierby into connector already. He's quite confident that nobody will see or spot him or slash him or push him. And that's the wrong guess. If Flush is on the server, there are pushes all over the place. Skirk with another frag in favor of the CTs and Config is fighting back. Rubino on the A-bomb side with a kill onto Ants, making it a 3v3 again. The bomb is dropped in middle though. Luckily, the terrorists still have one minute on the clock. Wow, I wanted to draw something. And... Um, that means they can use those players in middle to put some pressure on the important positions. Use Rubino to cover that. They first want to clean up that, that spot. That's why Rubino is still looking there. They are unsure if there is any CT over here. Now Rubino makes his way into the A-bomb site. He's confident there is nobody around anymore. A very methodical setup by Dignitas. Taking their time, you know, um, doing everything right. 
and it's Tensky to shut down Korn on the rotation. The CT is down to two men, but they equalize it, and now Moen draws it in the favor of the CTs. Rubino is alone. The bomb is taken in his favor, but he's crammed in the corner, and the CTs are getting closer and closer. They can kind of divert the bomb site, and that was in a very important frag for Rubino to make it a 1v1. Sadly for him, he is stuck in the corner, and Flusher knows. Now Flusher puts the balls on the table. Rubino just shoots to make him fake. And Flusher goes down to the headshot. What a great clutch by Rubino. 4-0 to zero in favor of Dignitas. Despite the 1v2 that Rubino had to, had to work through. Had to battle through. And in the end he managed to win it as well. Even though Flusher knew his position. The Swede wasn't able to get this 1v1 in his team's favor. The Danes are aware of the bad financial situation the CTs are in. So they are simply rushing the B bomb side. Good flash, so flush with the double kill in B short. Suddenly it's a 3v5. There are two weapons on the loose. The CTs managed to get their hands on one of them. And they should pass it on to the armor targets. Oh, Kiev and Config will get those kills. Skirk with one in Kitchen, though. The CTs are still not out of this. Config has to battle through that. He drops into the bomb site, and that allows Skirk to get closer. He will finish him off and go for the defuse. And he will... Wow, that's going to be close. That's going to be really close, but five seconds should be enough now. Skirk defuses the bomb just in time. Triple kill for him. Flusher with the opening double, and the stand-ins will win BX3, the first round of this game. 4-1. to one. What a great way to uh, get themselves on track on the CT side with an upset in the eco round. That's definitely a little bumming for Dignitas, especially with the good amount of frags the CTs racked up in the first few rounds. Um, we saw in this game, Dignitas is only able to purchase two Galils for MSL and Tensky. Obviously the rest of the squad with AKs, but that's going to be a hard, hard time for them. Flusher with the double kill. Flusher makes it a triple. Oh, he turns around. Now it goes down to the flank by Kierby, who makes it a 2v1 in the CT's favor still. But already, you know, drawing some more attention to the A bomb side, going for the rotation to B. Trying to split the CTs up. He knows that they were on the rotation to A. They knew where he was. So the best way to make it a 1v1 situation that he can win. And then another 1v1 situation that he can win. Is separate them by taking it to the B bomb site. So they have to either split up or allow him to plant the bomb uncontestedly. That's going to be the case. BX3 sticks together. They focus on the round win and not necessarily to go for some heroic play. Moen and Korn approach the bombsite from B short and Kitchen. So they have a crossfire of, s of sorts. They can clean up a few more angles together. Korn is a little bit too fast for his teammate though. No cover by Moen. It was impossible for him to cover his teammate. Now Kierby made it a 1v1. And the bomb is taken faster, faster. Moen doesn't have a defuse kit, and Kiabi will spray him down. Close quarter, 4k for the youngster from Dignitas. Making it 5 to 1 and shutting BX3's engine down right away. 8 kills for Flusher, 5 for Skirk. But that's still not enough for BX3 to win this, uh, well, this opening time uh, this opening exchange between them and their opponents. We have Korn on the B-bomb side, a forced buy by the CTs with an AWP for Flusher, an M4A1 for Skirk, who uses it in his own favor. Again, it's that double kill, in fact. Oh, now Dignitas has to fight back Rubino, the Norwegian. He's fighting against his own kind, but he's having no remorse at all. He gets a double kill. Now he's alone against the rest of the CTs. This could be another force by slash eco round upset by BX3. Rubino is crammed in behind that van. Korn hasn't spotted him yet, but now he did. And that's an easy frag with a 5-7. The Norwegians get their second round. And this is going to at least look... Like an open exchange between the teams.
Let's see if the Itas can can get a few frags and you know keep the economy for BX3 low in this eco round. Dane's looking for the bomb plan. That's the first and biggest objective. Second and third would be getting frags and winning the round. Moen and Flusher will make that a little harder, but Config gets it back with the Deagle headshot. Now Kevi goes down to Flusher and Tensky with the P250. Suicide move. Runs into the corner, gets a frag, picks up the AK, but now he will go down to Flusher with a triple kill. It looks like Flusher is shooting pigeons sometimes. He makes it look so easy. But Diggy Tass is by no means a bad team. You have to keep that in mind as well. It's just Flusher loose from the leash, running wild. Dignitas with another save. But considering they are on the terrorist side, five rounds out of uh, eight, let's say eight, because the ninth round is underway still. Um, five out of eight is not a bad count at all. Oh, look at Tensky! That double kill! Wow, that's, that's definitely... Just him showing off his deathmatch skills and the CT line up again. They try to double up and um, if they make a mistake, he could actually win this round. Korn has that angle covered though and BX3 will not let that slip away from them anymore. 5 to 4. BX3 closes the gap, makes Team Dignitas feel the pressure. But the terrorists are back on weapons and they have a rough idea where to go, I think. That middle has been left open by BX3 quite a few times, or at least the teams didn't really face off in mid as of yet. Now Dignitas knows that there is an orb in middle, but they can use that fact, the fact they know it, into their own advantage. With a smoke and some middle control play, they could push the orb back into an unfortunate and uncomfortable position. And after that, they could go for some exit, uh, some entry frags into window, B short, connector, or just poke around in A apartments. And they will take middle control with the smokes and the nades. Now they have that key player in apartments, it's Rubino. But look at Enz, he's going for a key play as well. Spots A main, nobody there. The call comes out for his teammates, but that's the wrong call. I mean, the call is right, A main is safe. But there are still players in middle. The CT is with a hasty rotation to B with three players over there. Could actually work out in their favor. Dignitas was thinking about going for B for a second. But MSL is in window room now. Uh, Config and Kierby are already in connector. A lot of control on the A bomb side for the terrorists. It's up to Enz to change the outcome of this round. He's spotted off guard by Rubino. The key player makes the key play. Even though he goes down after that, the bomb side has been breached. And Config and KRB will push Skirk together. It's a 4v3. It should be impossible for the CTs to come back at that stage of the round. And MSL and KRB will prove me right. Korn is the last man standing here. Dignitas is looking for the frag. He will pick up one on the exit. But now he will be flanked again. And the CTs can't save a single weapon. That is going to be a huge blow for their economy. They find themselves in a sort of weird situation where two players could force something up, but the rest can't. So they will most likely save um, as much as possible and just go for some P250, 5.7s and stuff like that. They could have purchased armor on Moen or Korn or on both of them. But I think the bigger priority for BX3 is an AWP and um, some Molotovs as well. Dignitas with the middle control play, but at the same time they make the push into the B apartments. And that could be the death trap. Five CTs waiting in the B bomb site. That's an amazing call by BX3. MSL disposes of the first one. Now he's running into some trouble. Could call out, but oh, look at that. MSL with another free frag. And a third of the round. The CTs weren't really adjusting themselves to the fact that MSL came in from B short. And that allowed him to go through the lines of the CTs, pick off one over there, almost got another frag here, and then got one into kitchen after he got the frag here. 
That's just one player cleaning up the bomb site, so to speak. So Dignitas back on their feet like cats. They were falling for a few moments, but they landed back on their feet. Now they're trying to stroll away with the scoreline. Trying to make it a four-round difference in the first half of this map. Open place for Moen. But nobody around to shoot. At least not yet. His teammate in connector will be under huge pressure. It's Ants who picks up the frag onto MSL. Moen goes down to Ruben. Oh, what a shot there on the off player. Kierby with some trouble onto Ants, but picks up the kill nonetheless. Making it a 4v2. But if we look at the HP of Config and Kierby, this could have been possible for the CTs. Oh, flush! <laughs> Threw the wall onto Kierby. What a wall bang that was. I mean, he only had 2 HP, but Flusher proving his game sense. Knowing exactly where his opponents are, no matter if it's through walls or um, through smoke. He just knows. No, I didn't mean to put it like that, you know. Um, um, he knows because he's experienced, that's what I wanted to say. Didn't help BX3 to win the round, however. So did it has. But the 8 to 4 lead. The Danes are looking stronger and stronger by the second. The more confidence they get, I think. They were a little worried about the impact that Flusher could have in this in this matchup. And Skirk is not a bad player um, either. So I think the Danes were a little, you know. Let's pay them more respect than we think they deserve. Just so we are not surprised. Sometimes that backfires, because because you pay too much respect, you don't play your own game. You kind of start playing your opponent's game, and then he feels confident, and he will make you struggle, and then everything spirals out of control. But I think Dignitas paid the right amount of respect to BX3, despite a few slips and misses. The Danes are looking quite good today. And that's what I'm talking about. If you just go in there and dispose of the AWP like Yabby just did, uh, it's gonna open you doors and hallways to everything on the map. 4v3 on the B-bomb side. The bomb is going down. BX3 lose another player to the nade of Yabby, who's on the triple kill. Flusher pulling it back to a 3v2. It's still possible for the CTs to retake it. I don't know. Check their money for a second. Well, saving is not really that big of an option. But Kiabi with the quad kill before he goes down to Flusher. He's now in a 1v2. But not any longer as Rubino disposes of him. It's 10 to 4 on the terrorist side on Mirage. That's a scoreline that even if it was terrorist sided, it would be. Way, way, way too big. So BX3 with the four Famuses and the M4A1, only a very limited amount of nades they have. Could work in the favor of Dignitas, as the terrorists are... Well, they are not going to waste too much time, though. Just waiting for the right call, and then they're going for the execution. That timing was a little off, though. The CT's already on the full rotation. Plus and Ants with the first frags. Config and Rubino able to draw it back, and Rubino with a great spray onto Moen. 3v2 now. Config and company are not too healthy anymore. This is still possible for Korn and Skirk. They're both in CT spawn, and Tenski comes in from Connector, surprising Skirk with a headshot from the side. Leaving Korn alone in the last round of this first half on the first map. Doesn't look too promising for him anymore. Tensky already covers the bomb carrier and puts a bullet to the cranium of the Norwegian player. 11 to 4 now for Dignitas. A six round streak at the end of this half. Well deserved, obviously. A few good calls and a few good calls by BX3 too. When they had that B stack on the eco round, I almost expected them to win it. But thanks to MSL's heads up play, quick play as well, 
Dignitas managed to avoid losing this round. And now they are on the CT side. If they pick up the pistol, it could be over very, very quickly. Rubino with the first headshot onto Skirk. What a beauty that was. And MSL picks up another one from the smoke. Kensky covers his teammates, or at least he tries. He does with a double kill. 4v1. And in the middle of the bomb site, everybody sending bullets his way. And he decides to go down, catches one with his teeth. And Dignitas have the pistol on the on the board. 12 to 4 now. Winning both pistols resulted in in an I think it was even 80% win win chance on 1.6. If you manage to win both pistol rounds, you almost won the whole game just by doing that. It's not the same in CSGO, but you still have a good chance to take it home. You know, you just have an have an easier time collecting round after round. Config alone on the B bomb side. The rest of uh, the action will take place on A, however. And Kirby is the first one to get a frag over there. Korn with the refrag onto Rubino, who was a little overextending there. Wanted to see if there's more action coming his way. MSL can't do the same mistake. They have to watch out. There is Flusher with the shot onto MSL. And everyone is going for the peaks. What is happening to Dignitas? Very undisciplined gameplay by them. A config with the Max 7 flash combination. Double kill for him. Goes to work on another one. Ends with the P250. Goes down to Tenski. And Dignitas salvaged the round. Thanks to Config's big play. The unlikely hero flashes himself in. Goes in there. You know, barefooted. Stepping on the coals, on the hot coals, the Max 7 doing the job. Great stuff by Dignitas. 22 kills for Rubino, 17 for Kierbei, 24 Flusher and 11 for Skirk. So you can see the gap between Flusher and his teammates is quite big. You could argue the gap between Flusher and everyone else is quite big, but Dignitas have their higher scores as well. Due to them being in front 13 to 4, obviously. And it's MSL to open up the round on the A bomb side. The terrorists went for some middle control, but the lack of nades, the lack of armor will make it easy for the CTs to pick up the round. Slush is alone in mid. He's joining his teammates in the early grave. 14 to 4 now, 10 round lead for Dignitas. Just two more rounds to go and they have clinched their opponent's map pick. Dignitas's pick is Overpass, which we will see right after this map, obviously. It is the best of three. So if BX3 managed to pull it back, on uh, Dignitas' map, it would be possible to see a third one. And I would be really excited to see a third map between those two teams. More excited if BX3 had their usual lineup. I think that plays a big role in their, in their team play and confidence too. MSL going for the frag in a minute. Rubino maps up one, and before Hans can react to anything else except for Rubino. Tensky has him covered 15 to 4. It is 11 map points, not match points, as I already lined out. It is a best of three. So the Danes just have to win one out of 11 rounds. And one of them is going to be this weak force buy. Three tech nines. It's quite a strong force buy, considering the fact that uh, they don't have rifles, but they have the biggest pistols and a lot of equipment. They are going to execute on the A-bomb side. Skirk and company heading in there. Skirk is the guy with the UMP. He catches uh, quite some damage from the Molotov and heads in there on his own. Taken out by MSL, out in the open. MSL with a second frag. Now he's helped out by Kier B as well to make it a 3v1. And Flusher is going down to a headshot. 16 to 4 with 23 frags for Rubino and 21 for Kier B.